Hello and welcome. This is the solutions discussion for lab five. You should only watch this after you've completed your own solution to lab number five so that you can compare your solution with the different solutions that I'll uh, discuss. All right, here I've got a file that I've saved as lab five CPP and let's get some input. Uh, we're going to need some double variables. If this was a more complex program that was actually doing something, we probably have some good variable names. I'll just call them A, B, and C and double maximum. Alright, prompt the user and put three doubles. Okay. We can read all three in at once. And see out a maximum value is see out max, see out end line. All right, save. Let's do a quick test compile here. We should probably get some warnings because we're not using uh, A, B, and C, and max wasn't initialized. Okay, so we got some warnings. That's okay. Our program compiled, and now we're ready to figure out how we're going to find the maximum value. So let's talk about doing that. One method would be to make a list of all of the possible ways that these three values can be arranged and then to determine which of those cases we're in. Uh, for example, there's two ways that A can be the largest. A can be the largest and then B and then C, or A can be the largest and C can be the second largest and B the smallest. And there's two ways that B can be the biggest value where A is either the second largest or C is, and then there's two ways that C can be the largest, C A B or C B A. So in total, we've got six cases. So we can figure out which of those cases we've fallen into with a series of if statements. For example, code that looks like this. If A is greater than or equal to B, and b is greater than or equal to c. Then max equals a. Here, I've used the AND operator. And the AND operator is used to connect two logical expressions together. Entire expression is true only if both logical expressions that the AND connects are true. So if you connect two logical expressions with AND, and this one here is true, and this one here is true, then the whole thing is true. But if either one or both of those is false, then the resulting expression is false. So it makes sure that both of these are true. So what this code here says is the maximum value is going to be A if it's true that both A is greater than or equal to B and B is greater than or equal to C. So those both have to be true. And notice that I used greater than or equal to instead of greater than because there's always a possibility that there's a tie value here. And it would be easy, if we're writing the logic of this, to leave that case out. And what if the user enters 10, 10, and 10? Well, the maximum of 10, 10, and 10 is 10. And so we want to uh, allow for those uh, tie values. OK, well, here's one of the six possibilities. And what I could do is cut and paste 
to make the others. So here, starting with the second one, if a is greater than c and c is greater than or equal to b, then max equals a. I've got two of my six cases, and if I cut and paste, then I could continue to find the rest of the possibilities. So that's one way that we could approach it. You didn't have to know the AND operator to do that because we could take this code and rewrite it slightly differently. So the same idea of testing for these six cases, but without the AND operator, might look like this. Okay, so if A is greater than B, which will be true in both of these cases, if A is greater than C, greater than or equal to C, max equals A. All right, so notice that this is a different way of arranging the logic that also handles these two cases here. So if A is greater than B and A is greater than C, then A is the maximum. And notice in this code, I'm not directly checking to see what's the relationship between B and C like I did in the previous version. If A is greater than C, and a is greater than b, then that checks both of those possibilities. And once again, I could cut and paste this code two more times and check to see that b is greater than a and b is greater than c, which handles those two cases. And then I could check c to make sure it's greater than a and b, and that would handle those two cases. So if I cut and pasted this code two more times, I could exhaust all of those possibilities. So there's another way to think about the problem. All right, well, let me show you one last uh, way of arranging it that's um, actually simpler than either of those two. And in the last possibility that I'm going to show you, you set the maximum to be the first value that you've considered. And we're going to consider each of the values A, B, and C in order. And each one is going to get a chance to be the maximum. Now, when we start with the first value, we don't have any maximum so far. So it wins and becomes the maximum value that we've seen so far. Then each of the subsequent values, in this case, there's two more, B and C, get a chance to become the maximum by beating the value that we previously had. So here I'll say if B is greater than maximum, notice I'm comparing b to the maximum value, not a, then the maximum value equals b. And now I'll repeat that if c is greater than the maximum, then maximum equals c. Notice in this program, I didn't have to check to see whether it was greater than or equal, I was able to just use greater than. And that's because if the values were 10 for each of them and max equals A, so max starts off at 10, then I didn't need to change it from 10 to be another value. That's just 10. Now, if a value comes around larger, if A is 10 and B is 11, then when I do this comparison here, maximum will be set to be 11. All right. Now, if you compare this code, you'll also notice that it's much simpler. There's fewer if commands, I think a little bit easier to follow than the previous examples. So I would say that this is, by a distinguishable margin, the best of the various methods that we used to find the maximum. Okay, well, let's just compile the program once and test it and put in some values, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7.1, and the maximum value is negative 5, which is the correct answer. All right, well, that's a look at some possible solutions to lab number 5, finding the maximum value. Thank you.